Sarah, hi, how are you? Hi, Laura. Great. How about you? I'm well, I would say I'm really well, but I have damaged my wrist. Oh no, so, what did you do? Oh, it's a very long story, Sarah. It it really is. It involves a demon and a, a delivery man and a dog. <laughs> But I'm you know, glad you're alive. Yeah, I am alive, thankfully. <laughs> but my, beyond, underneath this like bandage, all my wrist is black and yellow and green, and oh, I'm in a lot of pain. Um, oh, but I'm, no. I'm trying to just forget about it. <laughs> but you <laughs> can't. Yeah, yeah. It up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's absolutely amazing to see you. It's so amazing to see you, like always. And I know you're in a wonderful hotel room today because you're about to film somewhere with Gaia, Gaia TV. I am. I'm going to film for Deep Space and I'm going to be on George Norrie's show, Beyond wow. Belief. Wow. And I've seen you all over the place. You've been to some <laughs> amazing, cool, different things. Tell us a little bit about the different places you've been recently. Oh my gosh. I'm so lucky. I've been all over the place. I was speaking at the UFO conscious or the UFO um, expo in, at Laughlin and that was amazing and then um, just uh, yesterday I flew in from LA I was speaking at the conscious life expo and then in a couple months I'll be speaking at the metaphysical uh, tribe in Illinois and it's just like all over <laughs> oh my goodness it's been really fun you are absolutely living my actual dream well, come along for the ride. <laughs> oh, you have no idea how much I would love to. <laughs> I'd literally break my entire body into pieces to try and fit it in your suitcase. <laughs> um, so when you were like, when you were at the Consciousness Life Expo, who was like the coolest person that you chatted to that you thought, oh my God, I just, I, I need to talk to this person forever? Well, I have never, I mean, I didn't get to talk to him, but I've never seen Bashar before. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't really, I've heard of him and I heard little clips here and there, but he was amazing. I got to watch that show and the, everybody I was talking to, they were all conscious. It was like just having so many people of, around you that have, you know, like-minded things to say was just amazing. Wow. <laughs> I felt like. You could just talk about anything and everybody would be like, yeah, yeah. There was no surface conversations, like how's the weather? No one cares. It's like, how's your emotional body doing today? You know? Oh, it was I love amazing. That. that is so it good. Was... Your energy centers are looking a bit misaligned. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and that's what you forget, isn't it? Because, you know, in the world that we live in at the moment, you have to you have to think about who it is you're speaking to, what level of consciousness they're at and sort of gauge your conversation to that, don't you? Whereas in an environment like that, you can just let it all out. Right. And I was a little worried when I was making my presentation, is this going to be too advanced for these people? And then as soon as I showed up, I was like, nope, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can say anything. <laughs> yeah. oh, they're right amazing. there. That's absolutely amazing. So the last time you and I chatted, we were talking about your first book, which mm -hmm. is absolutely superb, A Hypnotist Journey Thanks. to Atlantis. Now, I know a lot of my viewers have already read that, um, but if you haven't already read that and you're mm -hmm. watching this, please, please, please do, do read it. There you go, A Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis. It is absolutely <laughs> superb. Um, the information that's in it is groundbreaking. And not only is it groundbreaking because of the fact that it's giving us new information, if you like, about Atlantis and Lemuria, but actually the timing of the release is so pertinent because of what we're going through right now. Um, and so today, I'm really excited because today we are talking to each other to discuss your newest book, which is A Hypnotist Journey to the Secrets of the Sphinx. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> so... I was so excited when I saw this was out. I was like, oh my God, quick, <laughs> quick, quick. And the link that you put up was to the American website. I was like, I can't get it. I can't, why can't I get it? Why can't I get it? And I had to like, just calm down a little bit. <laughs> Aww. Go on to the UK website. Uh, and then, and then I got it. And it's wonderful. It's absolutely superb. But please tell us all about it. 
Well, the first thing to know is that I'm not the one writing these books. All this information comes through the higher self of my clients. And I only use clients that don't know anything about this material. That way I can keep it valid. I use Jen again for this book because she is just such a good subject. She was a teacher at the kids' school. I knew she had never read a Dolores Cannon book. And so she's just such a perfect subject. And then I also use some other subjects in the book that also didn't know anything about anything at all. And I, Sorry, carry on. Oh, no. Um, and Jen was such a great subject because we went back to her other lifetime in the 1970s, where I was able to really get a detailed account of what that lifetime was like. But what was amazing was when she was being called crazy and um, went through the electric shocks and then eventually the lobotomy, when she didn't have any confines on her mind, she, her mind was limitless. And through these memories, I could find out anything. And it was incredible. I mean, from that, she could tap into anything. And we found out information about extraterrestrial lifetimes, the Sphinx, and just like it really put a different perspective on the nature of our reality and why we're here. So I really love to give, give like um, other consciousness, like a chance to speak because I feel like this book really helps you understand on a deeper level, like extraterrestrials, basically. I mean, in a sense, we are all extraterrestrial, but you really get to feel it from their perspective because these are memories of them, you know, living on other planets and what it's like for them to come to earth. So I love giving that perspective because it really helps you see life in a totally different way. When you understand we're so connected. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the level of detail that Jen gives, I mean, you, you, there's all different types of clients, isn't there, and subjects. Yeah. And Jen is just the absolute <laughs> diamond, isn't she? But why, yeah. I, why I found this fascinating is because of tapping into the life of Christy, the lifetime of Christy, where she'd had that lobotomy and then like you say she became limitless and she started to live inside of herself because she couldn't <laughs> actually do anything outside of herself then right. the, the levels of what you were able to tap into through that was superb and, right. and yet you tapped into that through going through Jen in this lifetime who then recalled a previous lifetime as Christy who then could access all of this stuff and I just found that absolutely superb. And um, some of the things that were discussed as well in terms of when she'd gone through to the other side and she could see all of the different levels and layers right. of herself. I was literally sat salivating. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I guess that's what we all do every time we leave this life. We get to see all of our existences and we can go through the different levels and see where we've ascended, which was interesting that we are constantly ascending. Like we're constantly learning and bringing our energy to a different place. You know, it's so interesting and you can find out anything. She said a lot of people just drift and float at look and look at different history and see what the, that was like. And, and then when you're finally done that space, then you can review your life and then you can move on to the next existence. I mean, you choose it too. You choose your existence. And can you imagine that as well, having access to not only that top level perspective of why you had to have the lifetime you've just had, but having access to all of the other lifetimes that you've lived <laughs> and where all of those lessons dovetail in so that you can see the full big picture of everything. I mean, I was thinking when I was reading that in this book, I was like, I don't think I would ever leave that space. I would just be constantly <laughs> flying up and down, trying to find out more about my own soul. So I could learn from that, all of it in its entirety. And But then how would you even begin to pick the next lifetime? But the thing are, is that we are still there. There yeah. is an aspect of us that we can tap into that's still there, still there. and find out what's going on in these other lifetimes. And that's often what we tap into, isn't it? When we're doing the sessions yeah. that we do. Yeah. I thought that was absolutely superb. I also thought as well about this book that um, 
the universe is so incredible it's divine everything is perfect and if you've got a mission to fulfill you'll fulfill it no matter what everything is sorted out karmically and there was a certain point in the book where Jen moves to Hawaii uh -huh. and, and at that point just as Jen moves to Hawaii then there was two new clients that came <laughs> I think it was um one was Fred and Yana and they both came in with information right at the perfect moment that you needed to complete your investigations at that time it was so it was so crazy because I thought oh no Jen is leaving how am I going to find another subject that's as great as Jen? I mean, she's like a diamond, you know? And I thought, how am I going to complete this book? There's so much more information I really want to find out. And then it was just, I mean, it still gives me the goosebumps to think about it. They literally just came to me. It was like, if I ever have doubts, I'll just think about this again. I mean, yeah. it was obvious that the universe was helping me. It's so absolutely obvious. obvious. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and how, um, you know, the name three was first mentioned <laughs> through Jen and oh then came God. through the other two clients. I mean, it was so crazy. I don't, I don't want to give too much away about the book, but no. it, is, it is absolutely su superb and, and everybody needs to read it. Um, so obviously the title of the book gives the game away in terms of what a lot of the, the content <laughs> is about, but Tell us more about that. I mean, have you personally always had a fascination and an interest about the Sphinx? Because I know one of your lifetimes actually um, centers around that as well. I went to the Sphinx in one of my lifetimes, but before I found that out, I had no real interest in the Sphinx. I mean, I didn't really care that much about Egypt. I never really thought about it because I didn't grow up with a spiritual background or you know, really know anything about anything at all. I found out all this stuff by accident. So I found out I did have another lifetime where I went to the Sphinx and I did go down, I guess in my astral body, not my physical body and see information that was within the Sphinx. And it changed me in that lifetime. And then I took that knowledge and went back to my village so after that, I definitely had a fascination with the Sphinx, but it was interesting because as I was working with Jen for the second book, I had no idea where this book was going to go because I don't lead any of it. I really just stay open. And you can even see that in the book. Like I just say, tell me more or what do you mean? <laughs> but they just brought us to the Sphinx because that's the most important thing they wanted to share. Yeah. And it was really interesting. It just ties everything full circle to one another that really we're just part of this group, you know, of ancient beings. We're all ancient beings that have traveled from planet to planet. And we're just here for this experience. We're all part of this group. But it's interesting because the Sphinx acts like a beacon, uh, a record, it stores history, and it broadcasts everything out that we're doing to other planets. And other planets are broadcasting other information back to the Sphinx. And everything is held in the Sphinx. It's like a very powerful and very special um, statue, but really it's on top of a special rock that's not from this planet. It's this Sphinx was built it? on the rock for that reason. It is incredible. But I make sure I don't read anybody else's stuff, <laughs> you know, when it comes to that and I just use my own subjects from deep under hypnosis. Yeah. And you, <laughs> can, was, you can tell that your subjects are really, really deep from the information that you give. <laughs> and your questioning technique is also superb. And oh, I just wanted to tell you that because as I was reading it, I was like, she's very good. She's very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. That means a lot coming from you. You're very good as well. <laughs> Bless you. Um, so what else did I want to say about that? Um, and in the book, when I was reading about um, one of the accounts, I can't remember whether it was Jen or Yana, and they went into the Sphinx in the left paw. I had a session this year as well, last year yeah. now, where when I went into the Sphinx, I went in in the left paw and I was just instantly aware that this place was like an interconnection point 
for all yeah. of the places in the galaxy. Very, very special place where you could connect with all of the other planets in this place. Um, and it is, and it's like everything that's old is becoming new again. You know, yeah. like we, we think of the Sphinx as being old, but it's becoming new because it's... <laughs> It's now that we need to access this information. Right. I Absolutely. know. And that's why it's available. But yeah. as I was pulling the information and retrieving it and getting it from my subjects, I found that some I wasn't allowed to get. <laughs> I got really close in one session and my whole session was stopped. And they said, we're going to have to interrupt your session. <laughs> You're getting too close to this information. And that information can't be released yet will release it to humanity at a later time <laughs> that they couldn't, we couldn't understand it at this time. It would be too confusing. <laughs> and in, in the session, what did you think when that happened? I mean, that was the first time that had ever happened to me because it was an, ob it sounded like a different voice coming through my client. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that happens if there's it, a higher being that wants to speak through the client, or if it's like part of their star family or something like that. But first it was a different voice. And then it said, we have to interrupt this session. You know, I was a little shocked. I was like, what do you mean interrupt the session? And then they started telling me different things. But what was interesting was when they brought my client back and they wanted to resume the session for the client at the place we were talking about, she didn't remember this happening. So I no. thought that was really fascinating, but it was on her recordings. So she was a little surprised afterwards, but it was really interesting for me because nothing like that has ever happened to me personally before. Has it ever happened to you? Only time that's happened is when a demon spoken to me, <laughs> when another voice has come through. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, demons are a whole different ball game. <laughs> right um, but yeah wow that sounds absolutely incredible and the thing that I love about this book as well is because Jen is so deep we get to um discuss and see so many different topics as well so it's not just about the right. things there's information no. about mermaids and fairies and giants and you know a million and one different things that are just so exciting um and I absolutely loved it I really really did love it oh thanks and there's a good chunk of information in there as well about ascension. Yes, which there is. That's always the thing that that is my um, well, it's my passion. Always trying to find out more information about ascension, more information about what you know, what's going to happen, how's it going to occur, and the thing that I absolutely loved about Jen's description of it is that there will there is like um an organic ascension happening on this earth but then there's also a quantum shift um that instantly transports people that are ready to this other earth that's been seeded in a higher dimensional frequency um mm -hmm. and I, I breathe a sigh of relief I have to admit even though I've heard 56,000 <laughs> people's versions of ascension when Jen said about um the quantum shift and um, I underlined that actually in the book and that's on page 106 um, a, a lot of information about and she says it looks like a dimensional hop which mm -hmm. is which is superb and there's a lot a heck of a lot of information in there about how the ascension occurs occurs um, the energy that's coming to earth the type of energy it is how it's going to affect us how do we ascend all that kind of thing and that for me was just wonderful because that is the current information isn't it that's what we're interested mm -hmm. in currently so you've got all of this old information well what we consider old but it's happening now in the now <laughs> re regarding you know Atlantis um, Lemuria Christie's lifetime in the 70s but then you've also got ascension as well and all of it together with tied together with a nice neat bow is helping us right now in right the point that we're at right now oh my gosh it's such an exciting time and yeah. it was so fascinating because the subjects under hypnosis don't they didn't know one another none of them yeah. know of the other person and as you you can read they all say the same thing yeah it's amazing it's they keep saying you know this earth is a manifestation planet now it's classified as that 
we're literally able to raise our consciousness now more than ever. And it's so easy. What you believe and what you focus on will come into your reality a lot easier. And one of the tools they divinely gave us to help us create instant manifestation was our device, our cell phone. So by staring at our cell phones, it unlocks something in our brain. I mean, yes, there is a negative aside, you know, to it. But by doing that, it unlocks something in our brain that helps us learn instant manifestation. Because I asked, you know, my son likes to play video games a lot. <laughs> and I, yeah, of course, it's good to limit it. But they said, you know, there's a benefit to these cell phones too. When a child looks at them, it's creating, it's helping them to learn instant manifestation. And this is beneficial. That's why you see them experience so much joy when they look at the cell phone. I mean, don't give it to them that often, but a little bit is helping them. There's a divine plan to every single thing in our universe. But as of right now, this is classified as a manifestation planet. And we're on a trajectory on this current earth in this current timeline where we are moving up the ladder. We, it, our earth has no choice but to ascend. So, and, but we can choose. Do we want to stay and keep raising our frequency? And all you have to do is just accept the frequency in order to raise your frequency. But if you don't want that, there's no judgment in it. You just find a different version of the earth that feels more resonant with you. Yeah. Wow. And as you were talking about cell phones then, it's like even what we would perceive or some would perceive as the more negative side of things like the technology, whatever the darkness uses, there's always a positive side for the mm -hmm. light. Because always. It, it has to, it has to fit both timelines. So it's right. like with the technology, you know, some people will say, oh, well, humans are becoming too dependent on it. And we're looking at it all the time instead of talking to each other. But then it's like what you say, having those cell phones, it enables you to feel what it feels like to be connected to a group of people, which right. can also get you used to, you know, the point in time where we become more telepathic and right. we start to connect to people in that way as well. Um, well, so even if you look, oh, sorry. Go on, you go. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> it's fine. No, but even if you look at early man with radiation and bananas, yeah. There's a negative effect to having radiation in bananas, but there was a positive effect where it started to expand their mind. Yeah. So everything in this universe, every single thing has a positive and negative yeah. side to it because we're in this 3D reality at the moment. It's like but, what, what you uncovered with your work on Atlantis. Yeah, I was and, yeah, thinking and that. The, and the vaccines. Yeah. But, but those vaccines unlocked... Um, the gifts, the, the special right. gifts. So it's right. like everything has got, the, there's a dark side and there's a light side. And there has to be because there are dualistic timelines running, you know, at the same right. time. So there's got to be a positive timeline that you can actually hop onto. It's like everything oh, that's yeah. going on at the moment, even though if you choose to be in the vibration of fear and, and focus on that, then it can be a really bad time. Right. But if, if you choose to go into the love vibration, oh my goodness, you're seeing groups of people all over the world who don't know each other, hugging each other, standing for something, standing right. side by side for freedom. I mean, what a time to be alive. So I know. a lot of it is what you choose to focus on, isn't it? De oh, definitely. And it's amazing how you can see in our reality how much better we're doing than when we lived in Atlantis. Yeah. Because what we were supposed to do in Atlantis was combine our compassion with our technology. And at the moment, we are starting to do this. And that's yeah. so exciting because that's what we were supposed to do back then. We were supposed to advance with both. Yeah. And even with both, it's, it's okay. I mean, there's always a, a negative to technology, but there's a positive too. And same with the jabs going on. <laughs> There's always a positive <laughs> benefit to everything in this universe. I mean, yeah. even if you look at like um, autistic children, I was thinking when, when uh, you know, Jen went through her lobotomy and she was 
nonverbal after that, but she could go so deep inside her mind. I've heard that autistic children can often have full on sentences with one another telepathically. There's so many gifts that disabilities unlock. Yes. And yeah. with with anything in the universe, I think it would be interesting to really learn more about that, you know, in our future. I think it's our perception of it, isn't it? I think it's, yeah. we, we think, oh, you know, th th there is something that's very, very different. But in the future, we're going to learn that a lot of the children with autism and Asperger's are these high frequency beings that have come in with different qualities. And we're the ones that's going to have to learn how <laughs> and th they're going to show us. It's just like ADHD. I mean, with ADHD, these children think greater than other people. That's a huge, huge ability. So like the teacher says, look at this box. And the kid with ADHD is like, that's so boring. I can think beyond the box, around the box and tell you more about the box. So I don't yeah. want to look at this box. <laughs> my daughter's exactly that. I, will, I'll, I teach my children at home and I teach her how to get the answer. And she'll go, mom, you don't need to teach me how to get the answer. I already know the answer. She tells me the answer. <laughs> and I'm like, baby, I know you know the answer. <laughs> but you've got to tell me how you got the answer. And she's like, but why? Why do I need to tell you? I know what the answer is. I don't get it. And I'm like, we're on earth. We're on earth at oh the moment. God. These are the rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. She sounds very advanced. She's, she really is advanced. Yeah, she is. Um, so, Fred the guy who channels three. Yeah. Are you going to keep working with him? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's not his real name. He, of course, he yeah. <laughs> definitely wants to stay anonymous, but he's, an, he's amazing. He's an amazing subject. I yeah. couldn't even believe it when I, I don't mind saying, but what, at the end, when he told me his name, he had never heard of three that he didn't know I was looking for three. Yeah. He didn't know that I had heard about this being named three and at the end for him to say, so Jen and another client mentioned this being named three, who was an extraterrestrial who was coming to earth, who was on earth now and goes to earth at multiple times to help humanity. But this being knows a lot about the Sphinx and what's in the Sphinx and different information to benefit us. Yeah. And, um, I never told Fred <laughs> that I was thinking about this being or that I wanted more information at the end of our session, after this person or higher being shared so much information about the Sphinx. When I asked who I was speaking with, they said, I am three, three is me. That those were the exact words. I just about fell out of my chair. <laughs> I was, like, oh was going to say, how did you react to that? Because I didn't, I was a little speechless. I couldn't even believe it because it was so obvious that I'm just being helped. I but mean, that, I don't write these books anyway, but it's so that's amazing. how the universe sets this up. And this is mm -hmm. your mission. This is your quest. <laughs> and you've written all of this before you came in. And you're I like, know. at this point, I'm going to have this client and they're going to come and see me. And then I'm going to, this, I'm going to write this book. And it's just all unfolding and it's beautiful. And it's a, exactly the right time for humanity, yeah. for all of this it's to so come funny. out. It's so funny how amnesia works. I had no clues. I, had, I mean, you know, consciously, I had no idea why I just moved to the Florida Keys, why I became, you know, a hypnotist, yeah. why I do this stuff. And then it's like, oh, because you already planned it. Yeah. <laughs> And it's weird that, isn't it? Because part of it is, it makes you think what? So I've had no say over any of this stuff. Yeah. Well, you have really, cause you planned yeah. it on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your conscious mind is going along for a wild ride. Like you're Disney, you know, yeah. Or yeah. amusement yeah. park. Like, wow, this is pretty cool. But I planned all this stuff for myself. So this book is absolutely superb and I recommend Thanks. everybody goes and gets a copy. <laughs> and read Thank it you. and also get book number one as well read that one first then read this one um but have we got any ideas for book three? Oh my gosh I start working on it next week I'm super <laughs> excited but I can't choose the ideas because they might totally change so it's wherever they leave me have you got any any feelings any inklings what the next one's gonna be um I do but I bet I'll be wrong <laughs> so I don't know. I'm super excited. So it's watch this space. 
<laughs> yeah. But that's really exciting. That's really I'm really exciting. excited. Yeah. So what's the best way for people to buy your books? What's your preferred method if they want to buy these books? Um, you can buy them on Amazon. That way you can also pick up the audio version if you want. Um, they're both on Amazon and Kindle and paperback, but A Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis is on Audible at the moment. The awesome. Hypnotist Journey to the Secrets of the Sphinx will be, but in a couple months. Yeah. And if people want to book a session with you for a hypnotherapy session, how do they contact you? Um, they can go to my website at theholistichypnotist.com. And um, I am a little booked up <laughs> at the moment, but I should <laughs> open up my schedule soon here in a couple months. But, but that's all good, Sarah. That's all oh good. My, I know. I'm so lucky. <laughs> Feel the gratitude. I do. <laughs> I am so lucky. I am so appreciative. But you know, and this is a wild ride. <laughs> it is a wild ride. But during this wild ride, don't forget to just rest a little bit as well at strategic <laughs> points in between books. <laughs> well, that's fun for me. I love it. So that's what I do in my downtime are the books. Yeah, because it's fun. <laughs> I mean, I I do the same. So normally. I mean, I don't know whether you find this because it's it's different in different countries, isn't it? But in the UK, normally hypnotherapy is really busy February to November. Mm -hmm. Normally December, January, it's quite quiet. So I normally write a book December, January. Oh, nice. But but as time's gone on and doing the courses and whatnot, there is no downtime now. So the books have kind right. of just like gone to the side a little bit. Oh, man. Spirit keeps going. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so it does it does make me wonder you know but it's a, it is a wild ride absolutely and it's been wonderful to see you again today oh my um, gosh thank you so much it's always such a pleasure thank you I can't wait to see all of your stuff on Gaia and oh, um everybody watching this video please 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 do buy the books because they're superb they really really are Sarah thank have you. a have an amazing time filming with thank Gaia you. and I will catch you, you again soon Okay. Take it easy, Thank my you. love. Bye. Bye.